we are going to look at a model um, steady state behavior for a DC electric motor. To start, we'll consider the magnetic force on a current carrying wire. This phenomenon is what generates a torque that spins the motor. In the drawing here, we have a magnetic field that comes from these permanent magnets and a wire and there is current going through the wire that's perpendicular to the magnetic field. So in this situation there is a force generated on the wire and that force F is given by the equation it's the product of the length of the wire and the cross product of the current and the magnetic field. So in the situation shown in this picture, a question for you, which direction is the force going to be? You can pause the video and think about it for a second. So in this case, the force is going to be down. You can see we have the, the forces in the direction of the cross product of the current and the magnetic field. So current goes this way, magnetic field goes this way, the cross product is going to point down according to the right hand rule. So here we have a force pointing down. Now let's look at the DC motor. Here is a simplified drawing of a DC electric motor. We have a current carrying wire and that's the part that spins, that's called the rotor. And we have a magnetic field that's generated by typically permanent magnets and those don't move, that's called the stator. And we have an applied voltage, a voltage applied to this armature, which is the, where the current goes. And so this side is the higher potential and this side is the lower potential. So that means that current is going this way around the armature. So another question about direction. In this case, using what we learned from this figure, so the situation shown here where current goes like this and the magnetic field is arranged like shown, which direction is, is the rotor going to turn? Is it going to turn counterclockwise or clockwise? So you can go ahead and pause it and think about it for a second. Well in this case we have current going this way. So on this side of the armature the cross product of the current and the magnetic field is, is the same as shown here. So I cross B is going to point down. And on this side, the current goes this way. So the cross product of I and B is going to point up. So on this side, we have a force down. On this side, we have a force up. So we have a torque in the counterclockwise direction. So for the situation shown here, the uh, motor is going to rotate counterclockwise. And this is simplified rotor. What's shown here Let's see. So what would happen what would happen if we sent current through the wire in this direction and we have the torque and we allow that to cause the rotor to spin then once it moved past vertical and now this side with current going this direction was on over here and this side with current going this direction was over here, then the direction of the torque would change. So the force is always going to be up on this wire with the current going this way, and the force is always going to be down on this wire. So if the current in these wires just stayed the same direction, then the rotor would just oscillate back and forth past the vertical because the torque would change directions. In fact, for this simplified rotor, the torque, well, hold on, I got ahead of myself. So to keep it from oscillating like that, we have a split ring commutator. So this here is the commutator ring, and that's connected to the armature, and current is passed into the commutator ring by these brushes. 
So the commutator ring spins with the rotor and the brushes are stationary with the stator. And you can see it split, so once it goes past vertical, then the direction of current in the armature is going to change. The polarity on these commutator rings pieces will change. And so if we were to apply some voltage, some constant voltage, and then plot the torque versus the position of the rotor, it looks something like this for this simplified version. Um, be zero when the this plane is vertical and maximum torque in the position shown here because you'd have the biggest moment arm and then uh, the torque would just keep rippling like that. In reality um, the commutator ring isn't so simple. There'd be something that look more like this on the DC motor. And so the torque that we get will still ripple, but not as bad. So this is more like the torque that comes from a DC motor. Now, one thing that you can see from this equation is that neglecting the ripple, the motor torque is proportional to the current. So the force on this wire is proportional to the current. Now the third phenomenon that we are going to look at while we're developing this model of the electric motor is back EMF. And what that refers to is when a conductor moves perpendicularly through a magnetic field a motional electromotive force is generated. Okay, so here we have this wire again, and this time there's no voltage applied to it, so there's no current going through it, and it's in a magnetic field that's going this direction, it's from north to south, and we're going to move that wire perpendicular to the magnetic field. So you can see the direction of motion V. Now what's going to happen is there is going to be some force generated on the positive charge in this conductor. And the magnitude of that potential, VB for back EMF or back voltage, is equal to the product of the magnetic field's magnitude, the length of the wire, and the speed. And so we have an induced current. And the direction is parallel to V cross B. So, uh, all right, I'll let the screen go black by accident. Hopefully it won't um, go dark again. Right, so we have this conductor moving in a magnetic field, which is sort of the case here. We have a conductor moving in a magnetic field. And so we do have an applied current that's generating a torque um, by the magnetic force on a current carrying wire. Um, but then there's also a... An, generated voltage, a back EMF. So let's look at that. Which direction is the current from the back EMF? So we said that this rotor is going to be moving counterclockwise, so that means that the velocity over here is down, magnetic field is this way, and the current 
that's generated is going to be in the direction of v cross b. So v cross b is going to be this way. And we said before that the current from our applied voltage is the other way. So this current from the back EMF is in the opposite direction of the current that causes the rotor to spin. opposite direction from the current causing the rotor to spin. So just to review, we have a current carrying wire. When it's in a magnetic field, when that current is perpendicular to the magnetic field, there's a force generated on that wire. We use that. Um, we have current going two different directions and they're separated by a moment arm, so that generates a torque that spins a rotor. However, once that current carrier or that wire is moving in a magnetic field there is a back EMF generated and that back EMF induces a current that's in the opposite direction of our applied current. So since the motor torque is proportional to the current going through the rotor or the armature we find that the back EMF reduces the torque. So conclusions that we can see from these three phenomenon First of all, we have the maximum torque when the motor is stalled. Um, in other words, we have the maximum current when the motor is stalled because we have the biggest voltage here. So whenever the rotor is not moving, there's no back EMF, and so we have the maximum current. And as it starts moving, we'll get back EMF and we'll have a smaller voltage, smaller current. So the maximum torque on a DC motor is when it's stalled. However, uh, you should note that a high current can burn out the windings in a DC motor. Secondly, the maximum speed that our DC motor is going to achieve is when the back EMF reaches the applied voltage. So when we apply a voltage, we'll have some current going through here, and that'll generate a torque. And so that accelerates the rotor. And as the rotor speeds up, we'll have a higher uh, back EMF. And so that reduces the current, which reduces the torque. So the acceleration decreases until finally we reach such a speed that the back EMF is equal to our applied voltage, meaning there's no current, meaning there's no torque, so the rotor doesn't accelerate anymore, so that's the maximum speed. So max speed where back EMF reaches VA, or the applied voltage. And finally, it's possible to measure the motor speed via the back EMF. So back EMF is one way to measure the speed of the motor, and that's done in some systems. So we didn't actually get to the steady state model of the DC motor, but we're going to end this video here, and in the next video we will go ahead and come up with that model.